lot of people want me dead. They call it justice. I'm the only one who knows the truth. All I have left is the wind by my side. Hey guys, welcome back. We are playing Yasuo today. Um, super fun champion, but also very, very difficult to master. It is a melee carry, guys, and he has a very strong early game, mid game, and late game. Um, the only problem is that you can be abused early on before you get level 3 because you often need your win wall before you really start trading. Um, so in the early game, especially level 1, you just try to last it with your Q. Um, additionally, you can also Q the Raptors just so you can get that tornado at level 1. You can do that if you think you will get zoned and then you can use that as an extra way of pressuring the opponent. You just want to stay back and then normally you start Doran's a blade but if you're in a more difficult matchup where you get poked down all the time or if you're against some kind of bruiser that hard counters you like the Renekton then you can also start with the uh, Doran shield. You get the E level 2 of course that's what Yasuo is known for. Dashing through minions. Um, what's good to know here is that the speed of your dash or E increases when you get more movement speed so that's also one of the reasons why you get Berserkers um, as the first completed item, the cooldown and cast time of your Q, and then also the um, speed of your E. Your Wind Wall of course is going to block all the projectiles. Um, it has a 30 second cooldown guys and it's going to stay that for a very long time because you do not max out this ability until the end. So you do not want to waste it. Only save it for the key abilities, just don't spam it on cooldown. You can use it to get some favorable trades and then you want to back off when it's on uh, cooldown. Really make sure that you abuse these minions, you know, dash around, use those minions to dodge the incoming skill shots, especially that Q from the Twist of Fate, because if you do that then it becomes a lot harder for him to proc the Electrocute. It is a good matchup for the Yasuo. The Twisted Fate is fun to play. Um, bad matchups would be the Bruisers, of course, a Renekton or something, or a Pantheon. They're very difficult to play around. And then, if you do end up meeting them, then you just want to play it out safe. You're going to outscale them. You're going to outscale most champs in the game because Yasuo is insanely strong in the late game. You build crit and you have free armor pin from your ultimate, so you're going to shred people. When you aim the Tornado, guys, um, the animation is pretty slow, um, so if people can see the animation, then they're gonna dodge it most of the time, right? So try to aim it right behind them, because they will often try to sidestep it by moving backwards. So you try to aim it behind them, and then a lot of the times you're gonna get free hits. We do have enough gold for the Berserker, so go ahead and recall. Um, you don't always get enough gold for it on the first place. In that case, you just want to get the tier 1 boots and then a dagger or maybe two daggers, depending on how much gold you have. Make sure that you stack up on the attack speed because as I said earlier on, it is going to reduce the cooldown of your Q and it's also going to make it a lot smoother. So this is a small power spike um, because you do get extra damage. You're not really getting any AD, you get attack speed and that of course works with your Q. And then also movement speed that works with your E to make the animation a lot faster. So this is a small power spike but the big power spike really comes in when you have the shield bow and then the next one when you have the infinity edge. So you can play really aggressive. Compared to Yone, Yasuo has a pretty strong um, laning phase. Um, against most matchups in the middle end because you're typically against range ones and they can't really fight you in a when you are in melee range that is of course different when you are in the top lane where you have to be a lot more careful but when you get level 6 that of course when you get that ultimate up you get to ult off of knock ups and displacement so for example the trundle pillar is also also makes it possible for you to use your ultimate. Same goes for the blast cones. 
Um, because Yasuo is a champion that has to be in the middle of the fights, he has super short range, so you always want to be in the middle of the fights when you um, damage people. That makes him very, very, very vulnerable. Because he's also super squishy. So it's important that you have some kind of synergy in the team uh, composition. Um, you want people who have some kind of AoE displacement ability or knock up. Uh, Diana's ultimate, for example, is very good. Malphite is also very good. Grag is also very good. Um, as long as you have co some kind of synergy and someone who can engage for you. Other than that, this is a champion that's going to take a lot of games for you to master, guys. It is not something you can master in 50 or 100 games. It's going to take you thousands of games. It's very difficult to play and also there are a lot of matchups where you have to play different depending on who you're playing against. Um, especially in the top lane, when people start counterpicking you, that's when it becomes really difficult. Just don't want to keep the AFK pushing playstyle that a lot of low elo Yasu players tend to do. Um, that is also the reason that they get ganked a lot. You want to really understand wave management and know when you can push and when you can't. Um, what's normal to do on Yasu is that if you let people push into you and you try to set up a freeze in front of your tower, then that's why you can really start going for these traits because you have minions and the enemy champion is only much closer to your lane. To your side of the lane. And that really gives you a lot of room to chase them around, um, really go for these all-ins and it also makes it harder for them to escape because they have to run much further now um, to get to the safety of their tower. Try to play around the tornado on the Yasuo, around the knockup, and then you use that W to block out the most important ability from the enemy player. In this case, that was the Twist of Fate's gold card, because that is the only peel he has. But that gold card, he has no way of um, stopping us. Um, he has no way to escape. So as long as you block that out, then you can go for these traits. And it becomes a lot better for you once you start rotating. So when the bot lane tower goes down, then you go to the bot lane and your AD carry goes mid. When that happens, then you get that extended lane, then it becomes even harder for people to escape you. So right here, I was um, apparently tanking a lot of tower shots. Uh, I thought that I was out of range and then suddenly Got hit by three tower shots and then we ended up dying for no reason, so also pay attention to that. Yasuo is extremely squishy. You can build defensive items like the Death Stance, the Guardian Angel, but you will still end up being very squishy. And compared to Yone who has a free get out of jail card, Yasuo does not have anything. If you ult on somebody then you are then you are suddenly straight in the middle of the fight and then you have to be extremely mechanical uh, good at this champion, guys, because people are going to focus you down, especially with all of the CC they have. You also need to have very good reaction time so you can make use of that win wall extremely probably, um, because people will focus you down with those point and click CC abilities, guys, so you have to be extremely good with that win wall and how and when you want to use it. Because there are a lot of good abilities you can usually block out with the win wall. Um, you can shut down the AD carry completely from the fight depending on how you use it. And the big pass spike really comes in when you get the shield bow because then you become a lot more tankier. But you're still very vulnerable to assassins because they typically run Serpent's Fang and that is really going to mess up the shield. Of course, um, Ruin, for example, is one of the worst matchups for the Yasuo. We are not really landing against her, so it's completely fine this game, but that's also a very difficult matchup. That is something you can play before level 6, but as soon as she gets that ultimate, then it becomes very, very hard. Same goes for Renekton, same goes for Pantheon. 
And then also some matchups are very difficult, but you are able to play around. For example, the Darius. Um, if you know how to play it, then there are some ways to counter him. But one mistake and that is going to get you killed in the top lane. So we almost have enough gold for the shield wall and that's where the fun part begins. On the Yasu, remember this is a champion that's very strong in extended fights because of his ultimate and the armor pin he gets from it guys. He's going to be extremely good against tanks as well. Especially when you start meeting them in the side lane, that's why you can really make stuff happen. And this ultimate is going to be on a very very low cooldown in the later stages of the game. But for this champion to work out in the teamfights guys, it's very important that you have some kind of synergy. As I said earlier, you want somebody with AoE knockup or AoE displacement. If you don't have that, then it's very hard to make him work in the teamfights because you absolutely need somebody to engage for you. If you don't have that, then people will just focus you down the moment you engage. So you need somebody who can soak up the damage and then tank for you and at the same time also set you up so you can really get into that backline and start messing the carries up. Also the dash is a fixed distance and if you play Yasuo then you should already know by now but of course you can dash through the Raptor camp and get to the other side of the wall that also works with the golems. You just have to make sure that you're super close to the monster camps before you start doing so. It does make you very mobile. And in order to get very close you have to make sure that you don't accidentally or attack the uh, jungle camps because then they're gonna aggro you and start moving towards you and then it becomes a lot harder to dash through these camps and get to the other side of the wall. So one thing you can do is that you bind a key to target champions only and then you hold that down because if you do that then your champion will not attack the jungle camps. That allows you to move very close to the jungle camps without auto tagging them and then it becomes a lot easier for you to dash through and get to the other side of the wall. So now we got the immortal shield bow, we also had enough gold for the BF sword so that's a big power spike. We're setting on a lot of damage and at this point you should be able to 1 versus 1 most mid laners in the game. Um, if you meet a bruiser then it can still be very difficult but you do have ways of playing around them. Just have to be careful that you don't get super greedy on this champ because um, if you have a lead then people, people are gonna focus you down and it is also very easy to shut down a Yasuo if people have point and click CC. Um, he's very squishy and if you do manage to chain CC him then he's gonna go down very fast even if you have the shield bow. So that's why I like to go for the Berserker shield bow Infindiate and then we have a lot of damage so I like to go for something defensive like the Guardian Angel because you get that extra life and then you can afford to play more aggressive without getting punished that hard. So that's something I can highly recommend. Getting the Guardian Angel, it is the same for Yone, I also do that on the Yone as well. Because you also get some damage from the Guardian Angel, but you also get that safety and you get that armor as well. So if you play against an AD Assassin, a lot of AD champs, you typically have AD top, AD uh, in the bot lane. And then maybe in the mid lane or jungle as well, then Guardian Angel suddenly becomes a lot better. At this point in the game you typically want to be in the side lane, but our AD carry is pushing solo. Um, normally they should not be doing that, but because we are so far ahead then it's fine to do that right now. But normally if you go to the side lane then you get a lot more farm for yourself, you also get a lot more XP and gold and then you get to meet typically the enemy mid laner in the side lane and that's why you can really start chasing them down and looking for more kills. Most of the time you're playing Yasuo will ignite so that means that when you split push you want to be next to where the objective is. So if the dragon is up then you want to be in the bot lane and if the herald is up and the dragon is down then you want to be top side. That is so if a fight or something starts near the objective then you will be able to be there in time. And it is the opposite if you have teleport then you of course want to be on the opposite side of where the objectives are. So you can bait people to get further away from the objective and then if a fight starts then you can teleport so you 
have the number advantage. Just take away every jungle camp, you can do those pretty easily. You also have a lot of sustain from the shield bow, so health is not a problem on these champs. You also want to get 100% crit, of course you get that from two items, because you get double the crit chance from your passive guys. And that's very important for your ultimate passive as well, so you get that armor pen, so you can really start shredding those bruisers and tanks. Beginning the split pushing phase, this is normally the stage where you start split pushing. Just get to either lane, we don't really have any objectives up, the Baron is coming up in 3 minutes, so they don't really have anything to take. In the top side there's a Herald, but enemy team will not be able to contest it. So really focus down the objectives, when you get a kill try to get something from it, not just the kill. Maybe you can take a wave and show that into a tower, maybe you can get tower plates. Maybe you could get some free wards down, maybe you can even get the tower. Just get something and then recall. Because you really need to take advantage of the time, of the death timers of the opponents. Um, to get something for yourself and for the team, even a ward can really do a lot because it allows your team to see the enemy jungle and then they can play accordingly without getting caught off card by a random gank. Um, so very important that you also have proper vision control on the map. That was a very interesting cue by the Riven. Now champs with a lot of raw AD and tankiness and point and click CC like the Riven is going to be very difficult for you to play against, especially after level 6 because they can burst you down and they can also keep you a place um, because the CC is going to stop your Q. It can block out your Q. Like if you use your Q and then she presses the W, then your Q is going to not do anything at same goes for your E and then she can also CC you the moment she's getting knocked up to cancel out your ultimate as well so you have to be extremely careful when you play against these champs um when you play uh, in this game for example you play against the twitch right um you can completely deny his ultimate um, so you really want to um, keep in mind who will be threats for your team in team fights. Um, in this case, if Twitch was really fit, it would be him. You really want to be patient with your win wall and then save it for um, the AD carry. Um, you know he's going to join the team fights pretty late because he also wants to bait out the important abilities. So you want to be very patient with your win wall and then save it for the most important player on the enemy team. We got some anti-healing this game because they do have a lot of healing. This is the patch where Goldringer is really OP, so people who can build it will be building it. In this case, Sensao and the Riven as well. They will be having a lot of sustain, so of course we want to deny that. And then the AD carry will also have sustain because of the runes. If they have a legend bloodline, they will naturally also be having a lot of sustain from the items. So it's very good to get that anti-healing early on in the game. You don't have to finish it. It's very rare that I finish this item early on. Just getting it as executioners and then you get the core items first and then you can upgrade it um, right after. So of course a couple cool mechanics you could do on the Yasuo, the Beyblade, Keyblade and so on. Um, it's very difficult to explain in the video so it's something you have to uh, look up and really try to master. The most common one is the EQ and then flash when you have the knock up ready. Um, that's used to call, uh, catch people off guard, for, especially in the landing phase. Um, when they're somewhat low HP and you can finish them off with a single combo, then you can do that so they don't flash. You can see how tanky the Riven is and if you really make a single mistake guys then you're just gonna die straight up. That's what happens against a lot of these bruisers, um, they're very punishing to play against and they also snowball really hard. Also if when you have enough attack speed and you have minions or enemy champion to dash to, then before 
you press that ultimate, try to get a free EQ combo off because that's going to put your tornado cooldown a lot lower and then you also get that extra damage. You obviously don't have enough um, attack speed to do that early on in the game, but at that point you can just get one auto attack off before you use your ult. That also gives you some extra damage, just to maximize the DPS output and really make sure that you're winning out on these all-ins. Farming is also extremely important. It's very easy to farm on Yasuo because when you get that infinity edge, then you just one shot the um, backline minions and you can also push out the waves really fast. You do not use any mana whatsoever. So you don't have to worry about the uh, mana usage and you also have really low cooldown. So make sure that you also farm well. And you do that by being in the sideline, taking away the jungle camps as well when you are ahead. And be careful when you ult. Just because you see somebody land a 3 man ultimate doesn't mean you always have to go for that ultimate um, because people could be having extremely dangerous abilities ready right afterwards and then you will get focused down. So wait for the right moment and don't just use your ultimate just because you see a multiple knock up. Because in this game here the enemy team does have a lot of CC guys. That's the gold card, that's also the Everfrost, that's the Bliss Crank with the hook and the knock up. And then we have the Riven as well. With a W and a third Q. So they do have a lot of CC and if you do end up getting caught by one CC ability then they're gonna chain it to you. And then you're gonna end up dead. Yeah, so it's very strong. In the early, mid, and late game. Um, in some matchups, he's going to be weak early game. But in general, he's pretty strong at these stages. He's very difficult to play though. So if it's a champion you like playing, then you have to be willing to invest a lot of time into it. Um, it's very rewarding though. Because you can play around a lot of bad matchups because it's a mechanical champ. Um, the better you become at him, the easier the super difficult matchups become as well. And you have a lot of outplay potential, so you'll be able to do a lot of stuff. But anyways, this was the Yasuo video. I hope this was helpful, guys. Um, as always, thank you so much for watching and see you all in the next one.